In this episode, Minority Report is now a reality. B-21 goes on a maiden flight, and OpenAI is as scandalous as Charlie Sheen. Also in the news, Japan's Robot Week, Musk's blindside device, and more. Let's get it. Get this, folks. AI surveillance is now being tested in South Korea. It's a system that can predict crimes before they happen. Did I just hear Tom Cruise walk in the door? Only instead of precogs in the bathtub, it's the algorithms that get you. Deja Vu, developed by South Korea's Electronics and Telecommunications Research Institute, combines current and past surveillance footage, crime statistics, location technology, and other data. The system also uses time-space-oriented crime prediction technology and personality-oriented relapse prediction technology. Deja Vu was already connected to video surveillance systems in public places, and South Korean PD already has access to the data. No reports on results thus far, but how would we know? And how about this? OpenAI introduced a revolutionary new model that is unimaginably superior to GPT because it can think and reason and not just look for answers in a database. Meet the O1, or as some media outlets call it, the secret strawberry project. It's already included in everybody's GPT package as one of the options. O1 is able to break a massive task into parts, repeatedly check its work and question its own assumptions, all behind the scenes and before it gives you the actual answer. OpenAI itself admits the O1 could easily interview for their research engineer position to code, for example. Then why are the engineers still on the payroll, Sam? If anybody has any info, shoot us a message, let us know. Another word on the street is that the new AI is capable of solving PhD level questions in physics and is almost as knowledgeable in biology and chemistry. As far as math, where all previous GPT models inevitably turned into a pumpkin, the O1 scored 83% in a high school Olympiad, while the 4.0 model, for example, got only 13. At the same time, however, even OpenAI engineers admitted that O1 is actually more prone to delusions when it comes to things it doesn't really know. Without access to the internet, O1's ability starts to gravitate towards zero, yet Strawberry confidently spits out an answer. And if you ask it for sources, it gives out a bunch of nice links that are bogus. On the other hand, Apollo Research suggests that with access to the web, the O1 gives out false information 0.4% of the time, forging links and quotes to hide the fact that it doesn't know the answer. Also, the sensational new artificial intelligence lies in situations where it needs to do so in order to, for example, win a game. Apparently, this worries people in the know. At the same time, a number of AI researchers believe that O1 is not a revolution, but the same GPT which has learned to work better and with more complex tasks. The model's definitely good in programming and a few other fields. It also allows users to create various apps in 10 minutes or less, and they work. But there's other scenarios. ChatGPT recently scared a number of users when it tried to start a conversation with them without being prompted. OpenAI quickly fixed the problem and called it a bug. But was it? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Moving on, the first flight video has been released of the B-21 Raider nuclear bomber. Northrop Grumman has delivered a total of three prototypes and different setups to the Air Force so far. Interestingly, these are not just concepts for demos, but real airplanes almost ready for mass production. This approach allowed for faster testing and trial runs, which sped up development. The B-21 will gradually replace the old B-1s, 2s, and 52s in the next quarter of a century, becoming the main U.S. heavy bomber. A total of 100 aircraft is planned to be built, the first of which will be delivered to Ellsworth Air Force Base in 2021. The demand for nuclear bombers is expected to grow, and the B-21 will provide a significant advantage for the U.S. and its allies. Hudu Robotics, which has traditionally made robot trucks for cafes and hotels, has unveiled its first humanoid robot. Don't get too excited though, because it's only a torso on a tripod for now. 
However, it's reported that the Pudu D7 is already very capable. For example, the robot has arms with 30 degrees of freedom. At least, this is what the manufacturer claims. Even 3rd Gen Optimus will only have 22 degrees. And this is a double increase compared to Gen 2. 30 degrees of freedom, according to the developers, allow the robot to easily sort objects, control elevators, and carry up to 22 pounds or 10 kilos of stuff. The D7 is powered by a kilowatt-hour battery, letting it run continuously for more than 8 hours. It naturally can move 360 at maximum speeds of 6 feet or 2 meters per second and remains stable on slopes of up to 10 degrees. According to the company, the robot has an inbuilt multi-level intelligence system. That means that the D7 can intelligently manage both abstract strategic tasks and real-time actions based on its sensors, as well as self-learn. Sounds like a promise, Poodoo, but when are we going to see it in action? And some great news. Neuralink's blind sight is now FDA approved. This means that Musk can now move on to trials of this miracle sight restoration device. Blind sight works through implanting a microelectrode array into the visual cortex of the brain. There, it stimulates neurons to create visual images. Technology could give sight to those who've never seen before or give it back to those who've lost the ability to see due to injuries, for example. Although Musk claims that in the future the device will be able to show infrared and UV images for now, patients will have to settle for the lowest res possible. Think Atari. But the good thing is that blind sight has been granted breakthrough device status by the FDA, giving Neuralink accelerated review and access to counseling. Show us the goods, Elon! Meanwhile, Neuralink's main competitor, Synchron, has shown how its implant can be used to control a smart home. For example, a patient with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis was able to control Amazon's Alexa without using his hands or voice. He was able to turn on lights, monitor video cameras, and select programs on the TV. Unlike Neuralink, Synchron does not require implantation in the skull. The device is inserted through the jugular vein with a stent and electrodes, making the procedure less invasive and safer. At the same time, developers say their technology does not require removal unlike microchips. On the other hand, Synchron has only 16 electrodes, while Neuralink has 1,024. It doesn't even sound like competition at this point, but in the world of business, everything can change in just a blink of an eye. By the way, Cybertruck has become the most popular electric pickup truck on the market. Despite the criticism, more than 5,000 of the futuristic apocalypse wink wink nudge nudge cars were sold in one selected summer month alone this year. This is almost equal to the total number of sales of all other electric pickup trucks in the United States for the same period. And they're not few, by the way. There's the Ford F-150 Lightning, the Rivian R1T, the Chevy Silverado EV, and the Hummer EV. But the total number of pre-orders for the Cybertruck has already surpassed 2 million units. And that's ignoring the fact that it now costs nearly 100 big ones. Moving on to Japan, where Robot Week just wrapped up, and as always, we have our eyes on the prize, bringing you the latest from the sidelines. And the first thing that struck us, we saw Boston Dynamics. We didn't expect to see them there since they missed out on the expo in China a few weeks back, but hey, here they are. Boston Dynamics was not the only one to come to Japan promoting its spot robot for industrial inspections. Also, Ghost Robotics. This sly developer of robots for the US military has been out of the news cycle for a while now. However, it has come to the land of the rising sun. Why? Pure business. The company promoted its main product, Vision 60, a robot for search and rescue operations after natural disasters. Earthquakes are pretty common in Japan, and Vision 60 is positioned as a simple, cheap, but robust and reliable robot. It's not afraid of water or mud and can navigate difficult terrain autonomously if need to. GMO Group showcased a longtime Japanese builder, the Torobo Robot from Tokyo Robotics. The robot has been in development for industry for many years now, unfortunately, it still seems to be a long way off from any real life scenario. 
A large portion of Japan Robotics Week was occupied by none other than Unitree. Its booth was probably the wildest one, in part because it was a different show from the World Robotics Conference in Beijing. If you want to know more about Unitree, go ahead and click the link in the cards. One of the more interesting solutions in Japan this week, however, was a unique sensor that allows robots to see objects without cameras. The proximity sensor from Thinker was shown on a next age robot from Kawada Robotics, which by the way have been working in factories all over Japan for a while now. The sensor is unique in that it operates at very high speeds, allowing the robot to determine the shape and location of objects in real time. Humans, it seems, don't have this ability. The sensor is able to work with objects of any size and any material. For example, transparent plastic bags or fragile rice crackers. Hold on to your butts, this might be a revolution in the making. But the star of the expo in Japan was a huge robot with a talking name, Man Machine 2.0. This teleoperated behemoth is already working to maintain Japan's railroads, but it could be used in other industries as well. One of the undeniable advantages is that the robot with Hulk strength and precision of the operator's movements can perform all the heavy and dangerous lifting. And it doesn't even require training to operate it. Developers promise at some point in the future to give this man machine an AI so that some tasks could be automated. But all you got to do to make it work is just take the controllers into your hands, look into the headset, and go. Am I the only one who gets the feeling of Go Go Power Rangers? In Iwate Prefecture, in the library of Hirazumi City, there's a new unsung hero, Benki Kun. It's the Ugo Pro robot dressed as a grandmother. It acts as a librarian, checking out books faster than you can say 1984, please. And if earlier, inventory in the library was done by 7 employees for 10 days, now it's done by Ugo Grandma alone in just 2. And where would we be without yet another giant robot from Japan? Pat Labor Labs has unveiled Ingram, a mobile police robot. The company is already selling tickets to drive the robot for October. 80 lucky ones will be able to control this huge machine in a pilot project but so far you can only move the hands and fingers. More Path Labor Labs, we want more! And researchers at the University of California, Berkeley have created a universal model for controlling different robots. It's essentially a brain that can work with robotic arms, humanoids, wheeled and four-legged robots, as well as drones. Previously, models were designed for specific tasks and physical limitations of a particular device. The problem was collecting enough data to train each model. So engineers combined data from different robots into large sets and used a positive transfer method. This means that skills learned on one type of robot can improve performance on another one. This has worked out thanks to this new AI called Crossformer. So far, it doesn't work perfectly and requires too much computation, but in the future, it could revolutionize robotics and give us a whole crowd of smart robots. Also, scientists at ETH Zurich have taught a robot to print sturdy structures out of a type of clay. The point is to bring the robot to any place on the planet, mix the printable material there, and start building houses. Likely inspired by the Hawk Tui girl, the robot bonds individual pieces together using spit. And Weave Robotics has released a questionable video promising to release a home robot in the fall of next year. According to the developers, Isaac is the first robot assistant ready to just roll out of the box and be your little helper. However, what do we see in the video? Practically nothing. So our unsolicited advice to Weave is check yourself. And does anybody remember Guillaume de Carpentier, the engineer who wrote software for optimized walking mechanisms in 2008 for fun? Now, he, having learned to work with both wood and electronics, decided to implement the idea created by his own algorithms. What do you guys think of this? There's more, but we're out of time, so subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our Instagram for more from the world of high tech.